Hello everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art and I'm here on the Tinker's Cart Art page but exciting news, I'm also broadcasting right now onto a very cool site called Craft Around the Clock. And this is my first Craft Around the Clock segment and I'm super excited to be here. And for those of you guys that are in my Tinker's Cart Art Group, you have to check it out. It's called Craft Around the Clock. It's, it's crafting all day long. You can't get enough crafting, right? I'm a painter, but I love to craft and there are so many cool, every 45 minutes there's a new person on with a new project live. So check that page out you guys and say hello when you come on hi Sandy thank you guys for popping on I really appreciate it hey Charlotte um, I'm so glad you're here and you have to check that site out too because you're like me and you like to do all the things so we are here we're going to do a beach painting today in acrylics I'm an acrylic painter I'm also an oil painter a watercolor a sketcher but today we're going to work in acrylics and very basic and I'm going to take you step by baby step so if you're just a crafter and you wanted to explore painting or you might want to try it this is the place because I'm going to show you a very easy painting today I'm looking at your comments as you pop in so if you have any questions please just put them right out there and I will keep my eye on those and um, I'm just so excited to be here painting so what we're going to do today I'll start at the beginning and then I'll chat with you as I go about who I am and what I do but we're going to paint it's a very simple little beach scene and what you're going to learn with this is really cool. You're going to learn a very, very simple way to make clouds. I know clouds are hard sometimes. We're going to do it very simply. A little bit of water with a little wave. Again, very simple. And these little simple um, little beach roses. And so I'm going to keep this little piece of wood on the easel. I'm painting it on this little oval piece of wood. It's just like a little barrel stave kind of. Um, a friend gave me a bunch of these, so I have them but you could paint them on anything. You could paint them on little canvases. You could paint them on pieces of wood. Lots of times I'll just go to Home Depot and have them cut the pine boards for me to shape, maybe like a two, two foot by six inch, nice uh, narrow uh, vertical or horizontal. And uh, those are fun to paint on too. I'll just quickly show you what this was devised from. This is one of my bigger paintings. I've painted this a lot with my students and in paint parties and things. And it's basically the same scene, just a little more detail. But let's do it really simply to start because I know some of you might be beginners or have not painted at all and I want you to see how easy it is. We're using basic craft acrylic paints. So I have just the little two ounce craft paints that you can buy anywhere. They're very inexpensive. There's a wide array of colors. I'm pretty good at getting across that if you don't want all the colors, you don't have to buy all the things. You could just buy the primary colors and mix them. And I help you as we go along mixing those paints. So these are just the craft paints that we're using. And these are the colors and pretty simple palette. I've got black and white. I've got whatever darkest blue and darkest green you have. That's what I use to make my oceans. I have a buttermilk or ivory, which I use for sand. I like to mix up some different shades of green, so I have a yellow there just to mix up my greens. I've got a lime green, apple green there, which again, if you only had your primaries, you could mix that very easily with your green and yellow and a little white. And a, and a yellow ochre, a golden ochre, just a little bit for the sand. Now, you can pull out whatever you have and try painting this scene. You don't have to go and buy all the things. Just give it a whirl and see how you like it. And I wanna pull this up and thank you guys all for popping in and saying hello. Thank you. Hi, Pat and Tiffany, you guys are great. I appreciate you watching. And so brushes. You might have some craft brushes and brushes around. Again, use what you have. I show you what I use. I show you how I do it. I love it when you just go and do your own thing too because you're the boss of yourself and I am not going to um, dictate that you have to do it a certain way. And I love to see when things get um, a little different. And Charlotte, who's watching, she does that. She runs and goes rogue and paints all kinds of cool things when, when, I, uh, when I'm painting with her. So I do like a lot when I'm painting landscapes, canvases especially. These are hog bristle brushes. They're long handled. They're found in the fine art department usually. They're not very expensive. But what I like about these is they've got some texture and they dig into the nooks and crannies of the canvas or the wood or what you're working on and blend very nicely. Um, but not a necessity. Use what you have. But these, if you're out shopping for brushes, I use a few of those and then I've just got the synthetics just the synthetic craft brushes um, some flats and some rounds that's all I'm going to use uh, to fill in some things and paint this, the ocean and whatnot and I do like my liner brush 
that's a nice long liner brush. When you wet it or you put it paint on it, it gets a nice point on it. And what's good about this is when I'm making long grasses or long lines, I can load this brush up with a lot of paint and I can make a nice thin long line without having to stop and start. And the secret is, as I'll show you, is just mixing a lot of water up, keeping the paint nice and loose. So um, I'm trying to po look up at the camera too. Hey, Dana and Rose. Hey, Rose. Rose is one of my students too. If you want to, when you're commenting, let me know if your Tinker's Cart art, you could put TCA or Craft Around the Clock and you could put Craft C-A the TC. I'll get that down as I go. This is my first time there, so I'm pretty excited. Okay, so what I would do is just, I'm taking a sanding block. I'm going to sand my wood piece down a little bit just to get it a little smoother. I only have a pencil line on there. This is not a painting that requires a tracer. Even the big painting that I'm doing uh, when I do it, I don't, I just do a horizon line and then I work from there. So that's all we need. I've got a pencil line on here. I've, I've um, sanded it down a bit. When I paint, lots of times I go from back to front. So I would go sky, ocean, sand, and then we'll put those little bits of beach grass and beach roses there last. And I usually paint things dark to light as well. So let me just take you along for the journey. I'm going to hold this up as I go. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If I don't get to them now as I'm painting, I will certainly look at them afterwards and answer them. You can also uh, send me a message too if you have any questions. Oh, Linda, thanks. This is actually a dress. I'm not a dress girl at all. It's 90 something out today and it's just the most comfortable thing, but thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the sky, like I said, and I'm going to show you a simple way to make clouds. Clouds, you can make them pretty easy. I have a little bit of a system and I'll show it to you and it's a good thing to practice and then you can go on your own, but it's a little technique that I find really makes clouds look realistic and it's simple but I'm gonna just paint my sky first. Painting in acrylics, acrylics dry fairly quickly. So I work a little quickly. I'm also a big oil painter and I love all that time I get to blend and finesse the paintings. We can't do that so much in acrylics, so I work fast and I just keep re-wetting paint if I need to so that I can get a blending technique like I do with my oil paints. Hi, Patty, thanks for watching. Yeah, let me know where you guys, if you're my Tinker Cart art people or the Craft Around the Clock, because I'm excited to meet you all. And um, I'm so happy to introduce Craft Around the Clock to my Tinker's Cart art group. So you guys all have to check that out. Skies, I start pretty much the same way. I take a little bit of white on my brush and I go right into my blue. I'm not going to worry too much about what it looks like till I start getting it on there because once it starts getting on the board you'll see is it too light is it too dark and then you can just dip into your white or your blue on the fly instead of mixing up a nice little sky color and painting the whole sky that it would look rather flat I'd rather go a little bit into the white sometimes sometimes into the blue and I'm going to try to leave this flat so you can see and I just go back and forth and I like it that I can sometimes have some dark areas. I can go right into white sometimes and have light areas. It'll look more natural that way for the sky. And I'm going into blue and white, and I'm just getting that sky done right down to my horizon line here. So I'm just gonna get that horizon line over there best I can. And this is um, a raw piece of wood. The paint is sinking into it and drying a little quickly. So I'll just work a little quick. But I, I do sometimes treat it. Sometimes before I start, I will take an acrylic. It's a water-based acrylic. You could get the Craft brand. I use it a lot, so I get the big quartz. It's Minwax Polycryl, water-based. Gives it a nice sheen, protects it afterwards. I wouldn't necessarily do it on a canvas painting, but on a wood piece or something that may go outside, I would do it. But that could also be used as a base. I could have coated this to start with that acrylic and uh, sanded it and it would probably hold the paint on top a little bit longer before it dried. But there we have our sky, just, just a quick little blue sky. You can see because I've not blended it ahead of time, I've just added white and blue as I go, just kind of dipping into it and you get some nice lights and darks and shadows. Let's see. Uh, oh, Charlotte, Craft Around the Clock is a Facebook group. So just, just in um, the search bar, Search for it and I will put a link later on for you guys as well. Hi Lulu, thanks for watching. Okay, so now for clouds. I want to work, if I can, while this is still a little wet. It doesn't really matter though. So I'm taking the same brush, I'm not washing it off. I, I don't want to introduce water, I just want to keep that kind of dry. 
And how I do my clouds is I just dip my brush a little bit into the white. So it's just the corner. Just put a little bit of white on the corner. And what I like about my the clouds is I see how they're um, a harsh edge around the tops, but they're soft fading into the background on the bottom. That's my little trick. And to get that harsh edge around the top, I just use that heavier bit of paint. So I just go ahead and I just make a little circle stroke, stroke to start. It's just a little, a little circle stroke to start. And then I just bring a few of those out. I'm always keeping that white bit to the top of the piece and just circle, little half circle, half boots and pulling it out. Now, because I had a little blue paint on this brush from before and a little bit of white there, as I paint the clown, cloud, not clown, cloud, um, it sort of almost blends by itself. So it's without even trying, it's pretty blended. That could stay as is, but sometimes it's a little harsher. I would just sometimes take and just soften it a little bit. If you want to do that, you can. You can almost use what little whites on here and make a few little clouds here and there. See how light they are? I'd rather have them, you put them on super light, hardly see them, and then reload your brush, build them up as bright as you like. Sometimes if you've got a big bit of white on there, it's a little harder to soften. And if for practice, just take the tiniest bit of white, a little bit, pat it off if you need to. And then again, just a little half moon, a little half moon, and then I sort of bring the brush out a little straight and, and I can pat in whatever I want. But see, it's very light. And the sky sometimes can be that. It could be just very light, light, light clouds. But then you can build it up if you wish. You could go a little heavier, just get a little braver. You could go ahead and add really heavy whites in there if you'd like to. Some in front almost. So you can see how I've layered them some. This one I put a big heavier bit of white on, but I built it up that way. I didn't start that heavy. Here I took a few little light uh, wisps in front and that could basically be your finished sky. That could be it right there. So that is enough for that. Since we're going into a darker color, we're not gonna even have to wash the brush out. I just wipe it off on a paper towel. For the ocean color, I love using my dark blue and dark green. Makes a fabulous, uh, I'm in New England, makes a nice New England ocean, but you could add more green and a, more, uh, a little bit of yellow. You could get a really Caribbean teal color. So you could use, these two colors are great for lots of things. Hi, Marion, thank you for watching. I'm watching the uh, comments a little bit. I'm gonna try to do that, but I'm, I wanna really show you what I'm doing. So I've dried my brush off on my paper towel, taken a little green, a little blue. And when I do the ocean, I tend to go back and forth with a brush stroke that's back and forth like this. Like the sky, when you start putting it in, you're going to see what you need. That looks very green to me, so I'll put a little more blue. I want to get just a little blue and green. I mix it on my brush, but if it looks too much of, you know, too blue, I'll add a little green, vice versa. You can take a little bit of white as you go and put that in there. Look at now, you can see that beautiful ocean color there that you're getting. And I'm just gonna work my way down. The ocean, th there's little bits of, um, as you can see on this, there's little bits of grasses on the side. So I don't need to go right to the edge. I'm gonna go right just to where those grasses are starting. I'm working from the top of the ocean, from the horizon line down, because when I get here, I wanna blend that sand color a little bit into the ocean color. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, nice long strokes. Tipping the brush a little bit into the white like we did for the cloud sometimes, just a tiny bit. And I can stroke back and forth and get a little bit lighter areas. White caps will put closer to the shore. You wouldn't see a white cap way back there, but we're gonna just work our way with our white here and there. And this is for your own uh, preference of what you like. You want a greener water, bluer water, lighter. Don't always try to strive to have the paintings look like mine. I try to stress to my students that even when I paint this the second time, it's not gonna look like this. So don't say, oh, it doesn't look like yours. Um, that's not what we're after. We're after it, it to look like yours. Where in New England? Oh, Mary, I am in Massachusetts. I'm in Central Mass, I'm in Clinton, but I also spend most of my time in Maine in the summer. So I'm in Wells and then back and forth from the beach to home. So um, I love New England. The winters are getting a bit much, um, but I am, so I do get to Florida quite a bit. My, I have a lot of family in Florida, so I am back and forth there a little bit um, as much as I can. So it, a, a, another way to get, um, uh, not another, I haven't shown you, um, a way to get some of the little white caps is very much like, same thing. We're just gonna dip the little tiny corner of that brush into some white. Closer to the shore, it would be a little bit of white caps. I'm just dragging some of that white through. 
and it does look like a little white cap and you saw how little effort I put into it. It simply was taking the tiny bit of white on that scratch. It's a little scraggly, which is great. And I just go across. Sometimes I get a little more pressure and sometimes I lighten up. And I'm gonna take that very light color and move it down towards the sand. I want it to lighten up here. Dry off all of that um, dark color. I'm going right into just white. And it's just gonna be a little buffer into where the sand color is, so. That's um, the water. We can add some details and some little line work to it if we want to, but basically that's there. Drying off my brush again. I'm going to go into my sand color, but I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to dry off as much pigment as I can. Take a little of that ivory and just, it's a little tiny bit of um, sand that's going to be peeking through here. I should probably look at this a little bit to see what I'm doing. Okay, so the sand goes right over here, right across. It's a little blue mixed in with it, that's okay, because when it dries and we put a little brighter sand into it and a little bit of the shading with the yellow ochre, it'll brighten up a little bit. And where these two meet, where the ocean and the sand are meeting, it's a little uh, blurred there, but I really wanna um, soften it. So I'm just using the same brush. This brush is great where it's a hog bristle brush and it's a little stiffer and I dry it off. I can use just this dry brush for so much blending. I'm just gonna blend it like this a little bit because I worked fast enough and the colors were still a little wet so you can see how soft that is now. That little bit of uh, water is just coming up onto the sand a bit. And I do have to peek at my painting here a little bit. Okay. A little more white, I'm just, just little corners on my brush, putting in some white here and there. I'm filling in a little space because my little uh, edges here with us where the grasses are going to go. I just want to bring the sand back far enough. So the sand I want to get a little brighter in spots. I can take just the sand color on the brush a little bit on the corner and just dab it on there and here and there. Heavier in some places. Some places leaving that little bit of blue in the background. Sometimes do the same thing with just some white. Just making it a little interesting by putting lights and darks. And what I love about the golden ochre, yellow ochre color, I use that a lot I'm going to just take a tiny bit, and if you just put a little in here and there, it just gives you enough of that little bit of yellow that makes it look like maybe someone's walked through the sand, maybe it's a little dune, and I always take the brush on the corner, um, the color on the corner, and then I pat it down most times, just to, to avert having uh, way too much paint, because I always would rather go very lightly and then go back and build it up a little bit. Let's see. Oh, Mary, um, Mary Ann, it's, I, my, I'm reading off my phone. Um, it's not about talent always. It's not about being born with it. It's not about, oh, I can't draw. I can't draw a straight line. I can't, I don't, I wasn't born with that. You can learn it. You can learn it like anything you learn. Um, I teach people step by step, very basic and tell you exactly what I use. And it's like anything. So, so think of it as, okay, I'm not a great cook. I'm not a good cook. I don't. It's not because I'm, oh, I just can't cook. You need a recipe. You need maybe to watch a YouTube video. I love to watch things being done. You can't just, I can't just go upstairs and make a lasagna. I need to have someone show me step by step or read a recipe or watch a video. And that's what I do. I try to get you um, to build confidence in just step by step learning because it's not something you have to always be born with the talent. It's not that. It's if you're creative and you have the desire you can do it, and uh, I'm sure some of my people on here will say that, will tell you that that is true. Okay, so we've got we've got quite a bit done already. We've got our sky, our water, and our um, sand color there. So let's go ahead now, and where the little uh, roses are gonna go, the beach roses and just the beach grasses, I need a base. So like I said, I work from back to forward. I work dark to light, so I'm gonna put a dark green here, and then we'll work forward putting in some grasses and some quick little beach roses. I'm just gonna go to the same sort of bristle brush, but just a little smaller. Got my green, I want it a tad darker than it is. I'm gonna just take a tiniest little bit of black, maybe a tiny bit of blue. I just want a base in there of a dark green. It can be kind of rough. It's, it's, not, it's gonna have grasses and things coming out, so you could just, put, just cover it just like this. You're just covering the background. And it's just kind of rough on the because we're going to bring like grasses up and things here so we're not going to worry about what it looks like exactly i'm just basically filling in what's left of the wood showing and 
again I just don't mix the whole dark green up I just work into the two colors I'm using I think it looks more natural and what we're going to do then is we're going to just build up I'm gonna lay this flat that way I can peek at it as I go to um, I've got much darker so see perfect example look how much darker this is on this one they don't have to be the same. When you paint it, it doesn't have to look like mine. You're gonna like it when you just step away and appreciate um, something that you made. Okay, so let's get a little bit of a lighter green now. And I'm gonna go right on top. I'm not gonna cover it exactly, but I'm just gonna dab on a little bit, a little bit of lighter green dabbed here and there, showing a little bit of the dark still through the background, but I'm slowly building up to a brighter color. And to get it even a little brighter, we mix a little yellow. This is a, like just a cad yellow, and a primary yellow, whatever you might have. We just want to get it a little brighter. And I'm really just using random brush strokes. I'm not worrying really about even blending them. I just want it a little base for the grasses and for the little beach roses to sit on. I think I'm gonna go almost a little straight yellow. It's uh, yellow is very transparent and I could almost get a nice bright yellow right on top of there like that. So I started with just a very dark green. I just filled in those two little mounds on the sides. Then I used a little bit of lighter green and then I really went with the yellow and, and just with the green from underneath showing through it really um, is nice and bright. So that's all we need. And let's see. Okay, and let me see if there's any comments here. So as you, if, you know, I'm trying to watch for the comments, but uh, like I said, I'll answer a lot of things afterwards. I mostly want to show you what we're doing. Okay, so now we will go back and, and add a little bit more for a wave, a little bit more of a splashy wave like this. But let's get our grasses started coming out here. And when I told you about that liner brush, let me show you how that works. I'm going to start with some of the darker green and work up light just like I did with the background with the grasses. We'll put a few in that are even that yellow ochre, but I really do add quite a bit of water to my brush, to my paints uh, when I'm doing those thin lines. So I'm adding a good bit of water. I want that the consistency of ink more than paint. I want it so that when I want to make a nice long stroke, I can get a nice long stroke with one stroke and then reload for the next piece of grass. But I don't want to be doing a piece of grass and having to stop and start. I've really watered this down a lot. And the stroke I'm using is similar like to this. Let me do it this way so you can see it. I start at the bottom and I press the brush a little bit and then I curve a little bit, but see I'm pulling the brush right up off the paper or the surface. I know when people say I can't get a thin line, here's the trick, press a little pressure, pull, pull, but see the brush is lifting right up off the paper and that's how I get those thin lines um, because it's simply no pressure and hardly any paint at that point. I will add water every few strokes if I need to, and you'll get the the consistency. You'll get the hang of it when you're when you're painting, and get you'll see what the consistency is. Oh, Maria, welcome from Canada. Oh, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad to see you here. I love it when people discover um, all the creativity and art there is out there in the on the web, and uh, we can all. We, we all started a course when we're all in about learning things online, but it's been a great experience as far as like reaching people from all over and sharing our, our love of creating an art. So I'm just going right here and there on the little mound of grass here. Can you see I start, I press a little bit, and I kind of curve it a little bit. These little, little wisps could be blowing in the breeze. They could go any which way. And I'm starting with the dark, but I'm going to go back and do other shades. It doesn't really show up a lot, but it's subtle. And that's important to start subtle and then get brighter and bolder. And so I'm just making lots of little grasses. Even if they don't show up, they are starting to show up over the blue or over the light areas. And I am going to rinse my brush off now because I want to get lighter. And I don't mind there being uh, water in that brush because I am thinning that down. I'm going to try to move my palette over so you can really see how I'm really thinning that paint down pretty well. And same thing, light touch, but I do give a little pressure to start. And, and I'm just building up, starting uh, kind of at the back of the mound and working forward a little bit, going right up over into the sky, right up over the water. You're sort of peeking through this to the, to the beach, to the ocean. And 
as I feel it starts getting drier, I'll just add a little more water. Now, if I want to get this a little brighter to, to be seen a little better, I'll just take a tiny, tiny bit of white into the color I'm using and just lighten it. So here I am with the one green getting a couple of shades out of it. Fun little beach scene. And I do want to put, I like the way some of these are like that little wheat grass, like it has the little things coming out. I'm going to do those in some with the yellow ochre and some maybe even with the ivory. I might mix a little of that. I'm a great proponent of just taking a little bit of whatever's on your palette and putting it in different places in your painting. Sometimes I'll even take this little bit of a gold and lightly put some in my clouds. It gives it a little bit of sunshine in the clouds, but it's also a fact of um, taking the color and moving it around the painting. It's, it makes for an interesting painting and it moves your eye around and it uh, is a nice design element sometimes too, if you can take little bits of your colors and put them in the different spots that you can. So we've got a little ivory mixed with a little bit of that yellow ochre and plenty of water. Some of them I like to go ahead and I'm going to go close to the camera so you can see it. Um, you've got one of these little grasses, but I might just put these little, you know, like the little, I just can think of it as like a wheat. Uh, and it's a nice little detail, so I'll put that here and there. Usually I do that with just the lighter color when I get to the yellow ochre or the ivory I'll do some of those and it's and it let me put them on here and then I'm going to do it in the dark color on the paper so you can really see what I'm how I'm doing it they're pretty quick just a few here and there I'm not going to put them everywhere maybe if one more here so what I did for that sort of stroke is I did my little grasses then I took the same same brush and I just almost like st pull, uh, set the brush down and then just pull it away and you just get that little kind of a wheat grass look there can you see it's a little further away from the camera but you get the idea okay I'm gonna let that dry a second I don't want to go in with my beach roses and drag the green in with me so what I'm gonna do is go in and show you how to do a bit of a wave and here's one that I did just for practice and it's closer so you can probably see it. So we want to get this detailed on this little wood, but basically I put little areas of white to make it look like the white cap. If it's a bigger wave or it's more detailed, I love to go in with a little bit of a lime green color under. When the wave is breaking, if you watch it and you're at the ocean, sometimes when the sun is shining through, it just turns that beautiful shade of green and it really works if you just pop a little of that green in um, under the wave so what I would do is go back now and it doesn't even matter what brush you could use around you could use a flat on the chisel edge I'm just taking a little white paint I'm, I'm a little heavier this time with it and I'm going to just go in and I put a little bit of white caps here already but I could go back and just make them a little darker towards the top of them just laying on the paint a little heavier and I can make a few of those I'm not going to go back too far remember though because you would not see big white caps way back here you could go back with a really thin watered down line if you felt like you needed something back there you could do something like this sometimes I would do that this is very blue looking to me now as we ended up I like the green I have in this one you could always go in with a little green I water it down and I very lightly just softly put that in if you thought you wanted more. The lime green, a little white, an apple green, not really too lime. And this is where I would kind of go right underneath the white cap and put that little bit of green that's there when it turns over. And if it's, it's a little bit of a harsh line here, I'd like it a little blended. I'm just taking just water on my brush and I'll just soften it. I'll hold that up closer for you to see too. But you could put that up under any little wave that's sort of breaking. So it's not a huge detail, but can you see, I've just put a little bit of green under that wave and a little bit of line work, as much or little as you want. You could take a thin down white and 
sometimes I just make these little ridgy lines down here that, you know, when you're at the beach and the little tiny bit of water is coming up on the, the hard sand at the bottom, it's just little bits of white kind of in a, in a, in a wiggly pattern. So you could just do that kind of. And now this is dry. We've got our grasses. We've got some of the little wheat grasses. I may pop in a few that are lighter. I'm gonna go right with this ivory, a touch of white. I really like contrast. So because it's, we've got darks, middle shades, and I wanna go really light with a few of these little grasses. So just a few, just because they'll pop out in the front. It's almost white actually, but I took the ivory and added a little white. And these can have, you know, a couple little of the little wheat details. I just like a lot of difference in value. It really makes for an interesting painting, having your darks, because then your lights really pop. If you started light, you could go a little lighter, but you couldn't go too far. So um, I like to put some darks and lights. On this little guy here, it looks like I put a little spray coming up off the wave. I just can take a crinkly, if I use my liner brush and make it really scraggly, I could just put a little bit of, looks like the wave is sort of splashing up a little bit. You could do it with a little detail brush or a scraggly brush. Wait till you see how super easy these little beach roses are. I think I'll do some on the paper here to show you. And even when I do the bigger painting, I do a little more detail, but basically this technique, and I'll even show that to that other one back to you again. I like to make, again, dark to light. So my little beach roses are gonna be painted in kind of a dark maroon, and then we're gonna work up to pink and white. But if we did not start with the dark behind there, your lights wouldn't show. I always make my own maroon with a little tiny bit of black to my red paint. I don't know why, but when I buy the bottled maroons, they seem to be translucent or never dark enough. I want a really deep, uh, nice maroon. And what I'm going to do really is just a big ovally shape, but I'm not trying to paint it perfect. I want it to be just rough and it's just gonna look like that. And then I'm going to paint those on. Then I'm gonna go back with some white and I'm just going to go on top of the red when it's even, of the maroon even when it's a little wet, and kind of make these little random petal shapes. And they really will read as beach roses when you're done. So they're not really anything too um, detailed. It's just going to give you the impression of the flower. And when I do the little white like this, I go right over the edge of the maroon sometimes. And it's just a little basic, it, like I said, it will read as a rose. So I'm gonna go in now, take some of that maroon I mixed, a little black and the red, and I'm just gonna put little random flowers. Can you see how rough I'm doing them? I'm not really trying to get them perfect. We're gonna put the little white on top and, some, and then we'll get the pink when the white and the red mix. So I'm not going to be too concerned. Some could be very small because they could be like little buds or some just smaller flowers. So, so do um, make random sizes, make it interesting so you have a nice variety. They're not all carbon copies of one another. I could do that upside down at least so you could see that. So I'm going a little darker. I think I might go with a little brighter red on top. I'm going a little dark now, it's just a maroon which is good because it will cover the background, what we've got behind there for those grasses and things. Some are small, some are big, and it's just just little maroon blobs, basically. <laughs> hey, Barbara, thanks for watching. Nice to see you here, too. So then I want to get a little brighter on some of the areas. It might not make too much of a difference, but sometimes I'll just pop on a little brighter red. Let that dry a little bit. But I do want to hit it with the white when it is a little wet. And if you're working along and you put all your little, uh, uh, the maroon bits of the flowers on and for some reason maybe you stopped or whatever and you, and you started again and it was dry, you're going to get a very harsh line instead of these mixed lines with the white mixing with the red. 
in that case, I would just almost re-wet. I would just dab a little bit like I just did with some red here and, um, and just re-wet it. And I'll show you why, because we're going to put the white on and it's going to blend a little bit. So I'm going to go just to a little smaller detail brush. Um, again, it's all like what you're used to or have handy. So don't uh, worry too much about, about having exactly what I'm using because it's really not necessary. And there. So I just go around and I... I start at the outside edge. I don't know if it really matters too much, but let me let's see if I can do it a little closer for you. So I just go right around. If you can see, I'm just not staying right within the little flower. I'm just dabbing on the white. Can you see how rough that is? I'm just making like a little flower out of that little overly round shape. And I like that it's very pink. It's pulling up a lot of pink. And I sometimes go back with a little bit of white still. And from a distance, because remember, when we're painting these things, we're so close and we're so critical. You need to really step back four or five feet often during your painting process and look at it because um, people aren't gonna be looking at it as close as you are and they're certainly not gonna be that critical. So don't be hard on yourself. Sometimes if you need to step away and look at it the next day, you will be shocked at how great it looks because you just need to rest your eyes and get away from it. And also another little tip, if you're painting and something really is bothering you or something's wrong and you just can't put your finger on it, taking a picture of it or holding it up in a mirror does wonders, especially even when I'm painting here now and I can watch myself on the other uh, device, I can often see things that need to be adjusted or fixed or things that are fine by looking at it in the video. It, uh, it makes a difference to take a photograph or just have a little mirror even. I have a little mirror in my kit. Sometimes I just use that attitude to just enjoy it the pro I think the process is the best part if you enjoy the process and you're having fun that's what counts and that's what will show in your painting if you're stressing about it and worrying about it and insisting it's awful that's um it's not an enjoyable experience just get in there throw the paint around and you will be surprised what you come out with and if nothing else you had a fun experience and that's really what it's all about. The joys in the process is what I always say. Now, if you're doing a bigger project or you're working a little slower, you could do a few roses or just one side and put your white on so that you get it to blend with the wet paint underneath and then work in sections and then do another few. So you don't have to always do them all at the same time. And sometimes when you have that paint on your brush, you can do just like it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bud or something. And I think on this one, I added a few little leaves, which is kind of cool. And, and let me show you how to do those. They're very simple. Um, I, I do like to do them sometimes with a, a, with a little flat brush. Sometimes if I have a little flat brush about the size of the leaf itself, it's perfect. And let me put them on, and then I'm going to move these away and show you on the paper how I make these little strokes. They're simply just little, I press and pull and press and pull and get little leaf shapes. I didn't do them so much through this little mound here, but mostly where they're overlapping on the sand. So I just had to press and pull. Just make some few little random leaves. I might do some in the light shade of green. They can overlap. If you've got a lot of dark area, look, you can put a few in there and it, it just brightens it up. And can you see how very different both of my paintings are looking? So we don't want to say, oh, it doesn't look like yours or it doesn't look like that person's and my neighbor painted it and it didn't look like this. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so really that's basically it, but I'm going to go and show you some close-ups of how to do the waves and the clouds and things too. I know it was kind of quick that we did that and as these little guys dry these little ones if it looks just too pink you can always go back with a little white and here and there and hit it with a little white to brighten up some areas not everywhere but just here and there if it needs if it gets very pink or doesn't pop a little bright white so there we are I will look at it again when I'm done the paint sometimes sinks into the surface, especially on this wood more than canvas even. So if I need to, I might just blob a little heavier white 
on those white caps because I want just the tippy tops of the waves to be very bright and it is sinking into the wood so you can just go back as much as you need to and just make that a little brighter. If I want to put a little bit of bright areas on the sand because it's really kind of a really bluey but that's a good thing because it gives you a nice base because then when you put a nice bit of the bright ivory on there it really pops so I'd rather have that in the background you can put a little, little yellow if you want you can mix a little yellow and a little white in the ivory but you, if you didn't have that dark blue background underneath the sand and we, we have that because when we did that first go round of the sand we had bl little blue in our brush and so you can see there it looks nice then when you put a little bit heavier paint on top of that. So we have our two little paintings again different they're not going to be the same but let me go ahead and I'm going to just set them like that and I will put up some photographs of these afterwards so you can see them but when I did those little little strokes with the tiny brush of the leaves it's just a little pressure and pull. Let me show you that with a big brush so you can really see what I'm doing. So I've got a big flat brush here. I want to keep the paint consistency a little bit mixed. But basically the shape is loaded the brush with the paint and I just press and twist and you get a leaf shape. And these are great brush strokes just to practice. You're probably not going to do huge leaves like that, but it's, it's great to get control and practice if you just use your brush, press a bit, and then I pull and just kind of twist it and get that leaf shape. This brush, even though it's this wide, it's a great um, tool because you could get a nice wide line, right? But these are also fabulous. I could do these thin grasses with this line, with this brush if I had to, right on that chisel edge. And again, keeping the paint thin down. So you could get a lot, you know, your brushes can be pretty versatile. You could get a, like I said, wide or thin. And then again, depending on the size of the brush, I kind of guide to the size of what I want to paint if I want whatever size leave I want. And then the same with a little bit of the wheat that we did on the grasses, you could do something like that. So you do have to play around with your brushes. It's fun and almost meditative sometimes to so just get your palette out and get your brushes out and we've done that with my group sometimes we'll be on a zoom and we'll just practice brush strokes I do a lot of painting with one stroke so that the flowers are done with one stroke with your brush loaded in three colors and it's fun sometimes just to practice those brush strokes too so um, let me show you a little bit of a closer because we have a few we have oh we only have a few minutes so I um, just wanted to show you We've got about three minutes. A little bigger, on a little bigger piece, just how I did the clouds again, which um, you can kind of see them there. But again, we've done the blue sky. I've taken the brush. It would have had a little bit of blue maybe on it, but basically the corner, just use the corner of your brush. I pat it out sometimes. And then just with the corner of the brush that has paint on it, you are just gonna go and make that little half circle and, and then just bring it out. And then you can go on this side and do the same. And because you're loading just a bit of the brush and then the brush here either has a little blue or nothing, you can get a nice blend that way too. Um, let me see if I can see some comments on here because I... Oh, Tiffany, thank you, because I want it to be that way. I don't, I, I, I have to say, I um, have a lot of fun painting and it's not always the way it's been. When I started, I was just like everybody else. It had to look realistic. It had to look like the photograph. If that was a building I was painting, it had 16 windows, 16 windows were going in there and the curtain in the window. And my biggest compliment would be, oh my God, it looks just like a photo. Well, that is out the window a long time ago because that's not fun. I, I, if I want a photograph of something, I'll take a photograph of it. We want an interpretation. I paint with a lot of color now and I'm very whimsical painter and a little abstract sometimes. And anything really goes, you want to enjoy the process. If you're going to sit and try to just copy and paint super realistic, now that's a style and some people love that and that's great, but you want to enjoy it. And, and it just wasn't for me. I'd rather have fun with my art. And I hope I can put that across to you guys too. And I want to make it easy because I know a lot of us aren't painters or we weren't, you know, people aren't always born with the talent. People learn it like I told you. So it's never too late. I have so many people in my membership and in my classes that haven't really started until they're in their 60s and now they have time and they've discovered it and they've buying the 
paints and the brushes and painting and I absolutely love to see that that just really makes my heart happy and uh, it's, so it's never too late you don't need a lot of product you don't need a lot of materials you can find any old thing to paint on and as you will see with my lives I paint on most anything so I'm gonna fly now thank you for your hospitality and happy painting bye bye now